Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to show you how you can create eclipse cards and I'm going to show you a few different ways. We've just done a virtual event on this in our group UK Cricket Creators. All our events are free to attend so come and join us and for July's giveaway you actually have to enter an eclipse card in order to be able to uh, be up to win some of the prizes. So I'm going to take you through how you can create eclipse cards and as I say we're going to do them a few different ways. So first thing I'm going to do is get my card template if you like. So I'm going to go into images and the image search, when you go to browse all images and you type in card, it's just endless and it's not card templates that are coming up at the moment and even if you come to creator and you filter it to Cricut, you're still getting loads and loads of other things that you're having to trawl through. So just a tip as well, if you come into images and you search for something and you just get so many unrelated things, what you can do is if you come to the top and you select category all images, it will take you back to the image screen and under highlighted categories, you'll see it says image sets. If you search in image sets, you actually get a more concentrated search result. So when I put in card in image sets, it actually brings up lots and lots of card template image sets, all different kinds. So just a quick tip on that one. And the great thing is when you select an image set, you get lots of the different cards in there as well. So I'm just going to select this template one here and add to canvas. I don't want the envelope, so all I'm gonna do is ungroup it and then I'm just going to delete the envelope. And if I just pull my card apart, you can see I've got my card and then I've got the insert. I'm going to keep the insert because that's going to go on the front. But what I need to do is if I come to the layers panel, you can see I've got two layers on my card. I've got my score line and then I've got the actual base card. If I click on just the base card in my layers panel, and I go to contour and I select hide all contours, it's then going to give me my solid card shape. If I select my insert and I go arrange and bring to front, you'll see that it's, it's quite a tight fit and I want more of a border on my cards. That's just the way I like them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an offset. I'm going to create a negative offset to make this smaller, but keep it all in proportion. So I'm gonna come to offset. I'm gonna tip the slider into the negative and I'm going to do negative 0.1 and apply and so that is going to be my first border section which is just going to be cut out of a card. I then want to create another one just to give it that dimensional effect so I'm just going to change the color on that so I can see a bit better what's going on. Go back to offset, keep it at minus 0.1 and apply. Again I'm just going to change the color on that and then I'm going to create my third one and that's going to be my actual image piece. So again, offset and apply. So this is my base card. That's going to be a layer that goes on it. That's going to be a layer that goes on it. And then this is going to be my actual image. So we have a couple of options as how we can create our image. The first is to upload an image and I've just got a simple background image here but it could be a photo or a watercolour image or whatever you want it to be. Couple of options, I can simply place it over the rectangle, draw round and slice or 
I could unlock it and actually make it the same size as the rectangle. But I am just going to slice it, get rid of that, keep that, and get rid of that. So that's one way to create my background image. Another way is I can go to upload. I can select pattern fill, which you can only do on desktop. So if you were doing this on your iOS app, you would need to upload it as an image and then slice it or turn it into that dimension. But I'm gonna do pattern fill. I can upload pattern. You can't search by name, but you can filter by color. So all my uploaded patterns, I always do a rainbow filter because they don't show in order of upload. So, and there's lots that are already on there from Cricut. So I always select rainbow so that I can filter and find them a little bit easier. And when I upload, that will go to my pattern fill. With my rectangle, I can change the operation to a print then cut. I can select the color square, change the print type from color to pattern. I can filter to rainbow and I can then select a pattern fill. And that could be a photo or an image if you wanted it to be as well. And don't forget with pattern fill, you can edit the pattern so you can change the scale on it. You can change the horizontal and the vertical line. You can rotate it and you can flip it as well. I can also create my own. So again, if I turn that to a print then cut, I could add in a pattern fill and I can then add images to it. What I can then do, once I've got them positioned, is draw round and I'm going to flatten. So when I flatten those images to that rectangular pattern fill, it's going to print it as you see it, but it'll only cut out the rectangle. The same with these. It will print as you see, but it will only cut out the rectangle. So I'm gonna flatten that. I can then get my text. So you can either open up a text box or you could get text from images. You could use a variety of both. It's completely up to you. So for example, with this one, I went to images, browse all images. I searched for book nerd because I really, really liked the image with the glasses, but that is a little bit too thin for what we wanna do. We want the font, it doesn't have to be really bold, but you don't want it to be too thin either. So what I did was I brought the image in and then I wrote book nerd and then I chose the font that I wanted to work with. So I've chosen DTC Cozy. What I've then done is I've come to the original one, I've opened up my contour and I've contoured out the letters apart from the two glasses or the one glasses. And then on this one, I've come to advanced, ungroup to letters, so that the letters become individual. I've taken away the two O's. I've then added my glasses in. I want that to be up a little bit. I'm gonna weld that line together. So I'm gonna go combine and weld. I'm gonna weld that one together. Then I'm gonna grab both a line and center horizontally so that they're perfectly aligned. And then again, I'm just gonna weld that. And I can then bring it over. 
Now, couple of options here. Because we've flattened this, we can't slice. So you can't actually slice that out. Now with the two pattern fills, you can because you haven't flattened anything. However, if you slice this and your print then cut is slightly out, it's going to be really, really obvious because the cut lines are not going to mesh up with your text lines. So what you want to do, and especially if you flatten because you've got no option, you cannot slice you want to make sure that your text is set to cut you're going to align and center it and then you're going to attach it now when you attach it what's going to happen is that it's going to print your image but it will not print the text so you will not have the text printed because that is set to a cut. And as long as you only attach it, you don't flatten it, it won't print it. So that when you print this, you'll see just your image. But when you cut it, it will actually cut out your text. What I like to do is create a duplicate. And with the duplicate, I don't have the text on there. So I have my image and then I have the other one with my text attached. And so how it's going to go on our card is like that. And then the book nerd will be cut out. This will go on top. And then my book nerd will go on to foam pads so that they stick out. So if we go to make it and I select on mat, you can see I've got my print preview there. Now this is showing up on the print preview, but I promise you as long as it's set to cut, your text is set to cut and it is attached to your print then cut or your flattened image, it will not print this. This book nerd will not be printed. It will only be cut. We can then go to continue. I can select send to printer. And you can see that that has now disappeared. So that book nerd has now gone. So it's going to print these out exactly as you see them. But when I put them in the machine to cut, this one's going to cut out the rectangle. This one is going to cut out book nerd and then it's going to cut out the rectangle. I turn the bleed off for this and I switch my system dialog on so that I can select my best printer settings for my printer. Other way you can create Eclipse cards is by using shape. So you can do it using text and you can also do it with shapes such as lines or other shapes such as honeycombs and a good friend of ours Louise Westcott who is also in our group has created some amazing templates so it takes all the work out for you so if we go to the home page and in the search bar of the home page, we type in Louise Westcott and select enter. And we then scroll down to community members. You can see her there. And it's definitely worth following Louise because she is creating some fantastic templates at the moment. So I'm just going to select Louise. You can see the fantastic honeycomb one there and you can also see this one. So we're going to select this one for now and edit a copy. I'm going to go back into images and I'm going to go to image sets and I'm going to get a card template. 
Again, I'm going to ungroup it and I'm just going to get rid of the envelope. Again, I want to create an extra piece. I'm going to go to contour, hide all contours. And then that's quite, that goes right to the edge. So I'm going to get offset and again, just do a minus one or minus 0 0.1. Get rid of that. So that's going to sit on there. And then if I ungroup this, you can see the template pieces, but I actually just want that piece. So I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of that. I'm going to change the color on that and then again create an offset. Let's turn that to white for now and arrange and center back. And of course, if I want to, I can unlock my strips and I could make them longer if I wanted to, but I quite like them like that, but I can easily adjust them. And I'm just going to align and center and exactly the same as before. I can bring an image in, I can use a pattern fill image or I can create my own image. So I'm going to change that to a print then cut and I'm going to go to pattern and I'm just going to filter to rainbow to bring up my pattern fills. I'm going to use that one and I'm also going to duplicate it so that I've got two of them. And then again with this one, I could slice it if I wanted to because it's just a pattern fill and I haven't flattened anything. But again, if your print and cut is slightly off, it's, it doesn't always match up perfectly. So what I'm going to do is exactly the same as before, is I'm just going to attach those cut lines. And again, it will print them as you see them, but when it goes to cut them, it will cut out the rectangle on this one, it will cut out the strips on this one, and that rectangle. So again, if we go to make it, and then continue and send to printer. You can see that the lines are not on there, but it will cut them out. Again, I'm gonna turn my bleed off and I will use my system dialog to bring up my printer settings so that I can get the maximum print quality. I'm only printing on card. I'm gonna use some pearlescent card and some normal card to print on. As you can see, it's printing, and as I say, you do not have the text come up on the print. So you will not see that text on the print. But as you can see here, once it's in the machine, it is actually cutting out that text. So whilst it's not printed on there, because we had it set to cut and attached, it is actually cutting it out. I'm just going to come in and fold the card over. And I'm just going to use my scraper to get a nice crisp fold. I'm going to glue my two card layers and my complete printed layer on. And I'm just going to use my Nouveau Deluxe glue because that's my favourite glue to use with cardstock. I'm then going to take my image piece with the words cut out and I'm going to place that directly on top of the other one. It makes a great template having that other one underneath. So again, that's got the cutout in it. I'm just gonna add some glue to it and I'm gonna glue it directly on top so that it's perfectly in place. I 
I'm then going to take some double sided foam. I need to cut these down into strips because I haven't got any strips. I've only got the squares and I'm going to add these onto my cut out letters. So I'm going to cut them right down and then I'm going to add them onto the letters to create some height. Once I've added them onto my letters, I can then start placing my letters onto my card. And the great thing is because we've got both images on top of each other and then we've got that cutout image, it creates the absolute perfect template. So it's nice and easy to get those in place and it just creates that lovely eclipse effect. And there we go, that's our image and text eclipse card done. Pretty simple to do once you understand the steps, so easy to put together and it really does look effective. For the next type of eclipse card, it's exactly the same process. The only difference is that you want to keep your strips in order that they're cut. It will make your life so much easier rather than trying to piece them together. So as long as you keep those strips in the directional way that they cut and the order they cut, it's exactly the same process. So nice and easy to do. And again, it looks so effective. And there we go, those are Eclipse cards. They are fantastic. Once you get your head around them, they're super easy to do, they're so effective, they look great, they're great gifts to give, they are just wonderful. Don't forget, for this month's giveaway, we are asking you to create your Eclipse cards and share them in our group, UK Cricket Creators. So if you haven't joined, come and join us. Make an Eclipse card and you might win a wonderful prize. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye!